So in the last tutorial, we learned how to, how to complete the filter from scratch. So by now we are more comfortable with the studio interface and how to create a filter from scratch. In this one, we'll do the same. We'll start a new filter from scratch, but we'll go a step further. This one will have a morphing face um, and it will have physics. We'll have a lot of different shaders. So let's jump into it. So in this case, we delegated the 3D art to uh, Luis, our our 3D designer. This should be a common scenario uh, among our clients um, where they need some 3D artists to create the 3D art and then they want to use it uh, and create the 3D filters with DPR Studio. So in this case we're going to create an um, Obelix inspired filter um, and here you can see the final uh, asset created by, by Luis, by our 3D artist. Mm, this face is going to be our morpher. So this means it will start from a relaxed, neutral pose, something like this, um, that is being tracked by all of these joints. This guarantees that the, um, this 3D head will match your own uh, features. So if your eyes are bigger, this will be bigger. If your mouth is smaller, this will adjust. Mm, and then from here, we will force your face to morph into this shape. So this is the basic concept. And on top of that, you will have all of these 3D props um, to make the complete filter. Also, in this kind of filters, usually uh, your hair in your headphones, for example, they will get in the way of the filter because you can see hair coming out behind the filter. We're going to work around that as well. This is one big advantage that Studio, that TPR Studio has compared to Spark AR, uh, Instagram or um, Snapchat because they only provide you with a dense mesh, with a face. Um, in our case, we're able to to provide you a whole head, um, which is much better, especially when you turn your face around, um, it's just more immersive. Uh, this is because we provide you with the tracking points. We have 68 facial feature points that we track and we give full access to those. So in this case, we assign each one to a joint that just need to follow this simple uh, nomenclature this means that you can control any uh, joint to trigger or to drive any kind of filter or, or animation. Uh, we will provide this mesh as well, so you don't need to, to do this from scratch. You can use this as a template for any kind of filter that uses this kind of approach that morphs you into another character. Um, so this is what Luis came up with. From this point, we're going to understand how we can turn this into a complete filter. First, let's uh, review what Luis did with the 3D uh, elements in case that you're going to create a 3D art yourself. So the first thing, you need to use this head and you need to import it into ZBrush. Then in ZBrush, you can start adding all of the, um, the shapes that you want. You can start exaggerating all the areas that you need. And then, usually, if you want to make it look really cool and realistic, you give some fine detail, like wrinkles um, and stuff like that. After the 3D model is complete, in our case, you usually use Substance Painter, but you can use um, the software that you prefer. Uh, and in, sub in Substance Painter, we extract the, the maps uh, that we're going to use on our textures. So, for instance, um, we can use normal map, so we can use all those fine details like the wrinkles, and we can use uh, maps like uh, ambient occlusion, curvature, uh, thickness map, world space normals, um, and in the end, what we will need from a 3D artist or from yourself, we're going to need a multiply texture like this. So this means that you need a white basis because we're going to, to use this texture in multiply mode. This means 
that uh, um, everything that's white it's not going to show and the darker it gets the more it shows in your face so this this means that we're going to add all these dark areas to your face this will help define all the wrinkles all the areas that that are uh, sharper uh, and also will add a little bit of color to to your face besides this we have um, a couple of matte cap textures uh, that we're going to use for the different materials. Uh, in this case, we have uh, metal for the helmet. Let's show all of the things we need. We're going to apply metal, the horns matte cap for these little horns, the hair, it's going to be cartoonish, a ribbon material as well. Okay, in this case, since we're going to use matte caps, Usually you don't need to, to care about the topology or the UVs. That will give you a uniform material look. But if you want to have some details and if you want to make it more realistic, then you can work that part as well. So you can add a normal map to the, to the matcap shader and that. Also you can add multiply texture to give it even further detail so uh, in this case we're going for that because we want to give this a really cool realistic though cartoonish we want to make the materials look uh, realistic and super cool um, so in this case you can see that our props they have proper UVs and they occupy the same zero one window this means we're going to need only one texture for the for all of the props um, you can go even further in terms of optimization and make even and put even the um, the dense mesh in the same uh, window so you only have one texture for everything but in our case we think it's better to to keep the texture to keep the quality up um, let's make it two separate UV spaces, one for the props and one for the face. Also, also in this case, you can see that our artist removed some of the faces in the back. Since they're not going to show, this is really good for optimization. If you can keep your poly count low, the better. Once you have your blend shape, you apply it to this face, to the face that we provide, to the head that we provide. You can create your own models, as, as I said earlier. But this has been tested by us. It, it, it works really well. You can use this as a template to create your own caricatures. So basically, you in, you in since you have your um, deformed face already, you apply it as a blend shape. Okay, just need to keep in mind that in terms of uh, order, so when you apply this blend shape to the, to the, to the model, it needs to be the first in our array of the formation. So in this case, we'll have a blend shape deformer, but also you have to remember that we have our joints driving the, the mesh as well. And after the blend shape is set to one, so it's taking effect, still all these vertices, all these joints will drive the mesh so you can move your, you can move your mouth, you can move your face, you can express yourself and the caricature will follow. This is really important. So just remember that the blend shape should be first in the deformation array and then the skin binding should be second. So if you want to reuse our model or, or if you already mm, painted the weights on your model, make sure to copy them or to copy that mesh and then apply the blend shape first and then the bind skin again and then you can reuse the, the, the skin weights you had before. In this case, Louis already applied the blend shape. So this is what we have, okay? So from here, we can jump into the studio. Hey, okay, and this is the filter. So this is the filter we're going to create today. Um, here's a quick preview. So uh, let's, let's get started with the studio. Let's create a new filter. Okay, so let's import our FBX. Okay, here it is. 
So you first thing you can come and, and select the, the resolution that you want to work with. But in this case, since we're going to work with a face filter, that there's nothing related to the camera, um, we're going to use fit to window. So just because we, we have more real estate and we see uh, more area. So first thing would be to import all of the textures. In this case, we don't have textures with transparency, so we're going to import all of them using the JPEG compression. We'll keep it to 100% so we have really good quality. Okay, so as you can see, all of the imported textures are JPEG 100%. So we can open the, the scene hierarchy here and okay the first group is the root this is all of the joints that are driving the the head the, the the face mesh or the head mesh in this case and as we can see here in Maya uh, Louis already added this joint here that that behave like this uh, just to add some physics to it let's come here and just add simple pendulum physics to this one okay and to this one okay so um okay we don't need to see we don't need to see this group anymore second group okay here we have the dense mesh or the dense head um and this is the one that will have your face and your skin information and on top of that we'll add all of the obelix details so first thing we need to see our face okay so for this we're going to use the simple morph shader and we need to change the the, the uv space for camera texture uv2 space 2 okay so here is my face and if i change the blend shape weight you'll see already without any textures that my face is already changing especially you can notice in the nose it's really funny so let's go ahead and take care of all of these matcap shaders to make it look like we want right so they are here in the props group let's start with the ribbon um let's use matcap in this case we're going to use matcap normal map because we have normal map for the props in the input texture we're going to to enter the ribbon normal map props normal map let's do the same thing for the air okay you can see the moment i have the normal map all of these details will will appear and it's it looks much better than without it the next one on our list is the metal which i believe is the helmet so let's go ahead metal matcap again it looks okay but generic since you add the normal map then the magic happens same thing for the orange okay so only three things left first we need to add the details and the texture to the face especially to hide those connections here um, and we need to fix the air and we need to change the scale a little bit make it bigger so it looks more like a bubble head more like a cartoon more like a caricature so we can do that simply by scaling the whole thing um, we can come here and let's say 1.2 yeah 1.2 it's okay so okay it's already bigger it's already looking much better and it's already hiding most of the air and the headphones in this case but still not ideal so let's import the air remover it's always a good policy to to save your your progress so let, let's save our our obelix in case anything goes wrong and now we want to add another fpx the one that removes the air the air remover i will show you how, how that one works so basically let's just import it here so you can see it in action so it's basically a plane okay 
which is centered to your face, so it's always occupying that region. And it has a blend shape that works like this, okay? So basically it distorts, uh, it wraps the um, this area where your hair should be and makes it go inwards. So it hides the hair a little bit. Let's see that in action. So let's import, in this case, add. We want to keep everything that we did until now. Add FBX. We're going to add the air remover. Here it is. Uh, uh oh, something went wrong. Let's see. Oh, okay. This is not 12. This is 1.2. Okay. Maybe let's change the name of the um, of this. Not root. No, this should be hair remover. Okay, much better. Mm, and now we're going to place this in uh, layer one. And we're going to apply the simple morph shader. And the input is the camera. Now you can see the UV space is not right. So let's change it to UV camera UV2. Okay, and now if we change the value of the blend shape, that it hides the air. So, okay, let's make it like 66, something like that, 65. And but now you can see that my body it's been scaled up that's because the main root we we made this scale um well we can go back and make it one and only scale the f or we can come to this group and scale it down so the proportions are a bit better something like this yes okay i think it looks better and now as you can see this is zero this is what actually looks without the air remover. And now with the remover, let's make it 75. Obviously, it will distort the background a little bit, but it's a good trade-off because you don't see all of this. It always depends on what you're looking for. But in this case, I think it's a good payoff. It's better to distort the background a little bit and have the air hiding behind the actual filter. So this way I look more like a cartoon. So mm, last step, we're going to add our multiply texture to our face. So in this case, we'll need a shader that it's not uh, already here. This is a good opportunity to show you how to import new shaders, custom shaders that you do yourself or that we can provide to you. So we go to set shader paths, add new. In this case, we have our shaders here. We're going to say open, close, and now compile shaders, compile. And this can take a minute but it will import and install all of the shaders all of the custom shaders that are in this folder they work quite a lot as you could see okay and it's done so we hit close and now all of the new shaders will appear in the list so in this case we're going to use the camera multiply shader and we're going to apply the camera here and finally the face multiply texture so you can see it uh, it adds a lot of um, detail and a lot of personality to it uh, and yeah you can move around and everything will follow um, uh, and it's a really fun effect and yes from here as usual you just need to export your model and you're ready to go I think this is this was a fun the tutorial. I hope that you learned to create your own morphing filters. So uh, I guess we'll see each other in the next video, in the next tutorial, and keep practicing, keep creating your filters, and have fun with it.